Good morning, everybody. We're here in Headingley, Manitoba, just west of Winnipeg. Getting going on our day. So we're going to north of Saskatoon for tomorrow morning. And then we deliver to Calgary the next day. And then we go pick up a, a big tank. Like one of those big green fuel tanks again. We pick one of them up in Edmonton the next day. And that's going down to Georgia, but we're coming home for the weekend first on the way down to Georgia. So it's a pretty good, pretty good trip, pretty good uh, schedule for this week. Uh, my blood pressure this morning was 132 over 75. Uh, if you missed yesterday's vlog, uh, I've been trying to get my blood pressure down uh, with help from the doctor. So I've got to monitor it for this, well, for the next couple of weeks. But uh, we're in the green zone for this morning. A little high, a little high. I'd like it to be more around 120 over 80, but you know, we're gonna start making healthier choices. We're gonna start eating better. We're gonna start exercising every day. And we're gonna get ourselves healthier. Keep an eye on ourselves, you know. I want to have a lot of life ahead of me yet. I don't want to have it cut short because I was too lazy to keep myself a little healthy or a little healthier. You know, I don't got to go all crazy, but I got to make some kind of effort. It'll pay off one day. Right, Diesel? We're just waking up here. It doesn't take too long to wake up in this cold. <laughs> or the Flying J. I'm going to be heading west right away. So I've found it's true that it's much easier to say you want to get healthy, you say you want to get more active, than to actually go and get more healthy and get more active. You know, I'm just like everybody else, you know, I always make these promises to myself, I'm gonna get healthier. <coughs> and then, you know, a week goes by, two weeks goes by. For those of you that have been watching my channel long enough, you remember that before my wedding, I was on a mission to lose weight and I actually succeeded in losing what like 30 pounds because I had a goal in my mind. I'm a, I'm a person that needs to have a goal in my mind and I need to come up with something else now that will motivate me the same way as my wedding. It's sad that I need to do that sometimes I guess but it's how, I, how my brain works. So uh, it is possible and all we did then was walk, right? And I had to walk every day, even if it was just a little bit, even if it was just a mile. I would try to get in three miles every day, at least. But you know, if I, if I was strapped for time, at least one mile. And I would just walk wherever I was. Went park at a truck stop and just take off walking. I'd set my app to keep track of where I went and how far I went and how fast I was walking. And it worked for me. But my downfall was when I stopped for you know a day break you know oh we won't do it today and then pretty soon it turns into you know next time we stop for two days and the next time we stop oh you know we just won't do any walking this week and then after that you're like you know what i think i'm in pretty good shape you know what? we could probably we could probably just skip it and then day after day after day and pretty soon it, that, that turns into a year you know my friend troy in in washington state there around seattle he he makes vlogs every day too. The channel's beyond 1031. Links down below in the description. Uh, he's been walking every day since around the time when I started walking every day, since before my wedding. Well, we started around the same time. We sort of motivated each other to get healthy a little bit. We probably weren't the full motivation for either of us, but you know, we 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 had this thing going. We we're both walking all the time, and he continued on. He's still going every day, and now he's engaged to uh, his fiance Angie, who's in Canada up in BC and they go hiking together all the time and they're constantly active. You know, I'm really proud of him that he stuck to it and that he, he, he remained on track. Whereas me, I veered off and gained 30 pounds from where I was. I gained another 20 over the summer. And you know, it's sort of my fault. I, I, I like to eat a lot of stuff I shouldn't. But anyway, enough about this. Uh, I'm trying to motivate you guys to be active and healthy as well. I'm not saying I'm perfect, I'm trying to explain to you I'm not perfect. So uh, don't look to me for the perfect example of how you should be, but... Uh, I'm gonna go inside, get my coffee, and let's get to trucking. That's way more interesting than talking about how fat I am. Wow, that's a messy load. Okay, just off to the left there. I can't believe he didn't want to park in a parking spot. Just go grab his coffee. He parked right there. And this whole driveway gets blocked. There's a lot of people lining up for fuel right now, though. Yikes. Must be something wrong with the pumps or something. 
I thought I heard them talking something about that when I was inside there grabbing my coffee. I thought I heard them say, ah, something's wrong with the pumps. Yeah. It's not usually that big of a lineup. So let's go. We're going to be taking Highway 16. Good for you, buddy, going for a walk, even in the cold. Good for you. Let me take a Highway 16, which is the other highway. You know, the Trans Canada is a four lane. Uh, but apparently, according to Karen here, I could s save 90 kilometers by going up Yellowhead and taking some other shortcut up there. Because we're not going to Saskatoon, we're going to north of Saskatoon. Probably around, like, what is that, Prince Albert up there? But it's a town called Wakaw, or Wakaw, or Wakaw, something like that. We're about 700 kilometers away, a little under 500 miles. So we got some time, we got some time. Well, plenty of time to stop somewhere yet and uh, get out of the truck and go for a walk today. That's why I left last night already, because, you know, I started here in Headingley this morning because, whoa, where are my wipers? Bump those with my hand. I started uh, last night, I wanted to get a little bit of a head start, so I had time today to do that. Well, we're getting up to the end of our four-lane driving experience. Turning on to the other highway. 600 meters, keep to the right on, Trans-Canada Highway, Highway 16. It technically is a Trans-Canada. Trans-Canada, for those of you new to the vlog, is pretty much the same thing as an interstate, except not as nice. It's a one road, or one system, road system, that goes from coast to coast in Canada, from the Atlantic Ocean over to the Pacific, across southern Canada, where all the people live. So uh, you get Trans Canada One across the west here that goes Continue on this road along for the south. Kilometers. And then you get Highway 16 here, which goes a little, little further up north. Uh, goes through Saskatoon and to Edmonton and to Jasper, Alberta, and uh, heads up into northern BC. And I believe it gets close to or meets up with the Alaska Highway and goes up to Yukon and Alaska. But yeah, there's only like two main roads that go through the entire country here. And this is the northern one. This one's not as well traveled. Between Manitoba and Saskatoon, it's a two-lane highway. They still haven't twinned it because uh, Manitoba. They haven't fixed that railway there either. But yeah, so it's a two-lane road. I, I don't usually take this route. Uh, it is a little bit shorter, but there's also a lot of towns you got to go through, a lot of stops and starts, so it doesn't really save you a lot of time. Uh, but it is shorter distance-wise to get to Saskatoon from Portersville Prairie, Manitoba. But we figured we'd go up here and change the scenery up a little bit. I go up here every now and then. Uh, but if you're in a big rush like this guy here, this is exactly what I was going to tell you about. There's always one person. It's a 100 kilometer an hour zone. There's always one person going 85. And then when you try to pass them, they can suddenly do 120, right? So I don't want to pressure this guy too much to go a little faster, but at the same time, I want to go a little faster. But I'm not getting any closer than this. Maybe he'll get the hint. Yeah. Other than that, though, this is a nice, uh, it's a little bit of a different route. Not as many stops. It's a little more backcountry. I mean, there's not much scenery to see on the prairies, so this is the most we can do to switch it up. <laughs> We didn't get to see that flat land over there, so we'll go see this flat land over here. All right, I've got my winter pants on. We're in Nipawa, Manitoba. This is where we're gonna do our walk today. Some gloves, got my reflective jacket. I'm gonna leave Diesel here for this walk, even though I, I know he needs to get a good walk in too, but uh, maybe we'll get a good walk in before bed. I wanna focus on uh, Power walking, we'll call it. No, I'm not gonna power, I'm not one of those power walkers. I just wanna get a good walk in. And it's a little cold out, it's minus eight Celsius right now. And there's a lot of fresh snow and ice on the road and sidewalks. And I think Diesel's paws might get a little cold. And uh, it's, I'm gonna be out there for a little while longer than I would usually want him to be out in the cold. So we'll, we'll take him for a shorter walk later before bed. Uh, but for now, I don't want his paws to get too cold. For me, I've got my winter socks on. Hopefully I won't be too warm. I don't want to be cold. We're going to take a walk around Nipawa. I've never gone for a walk here yet, so uh, let's go explore this town a little bit. So I use this app called Map My Fitness. 
and it'll pretty much just track my movements as I walk. Oops. And uh, it'll keep track of the distance, the duration, my pace, uh, minutes per kilometer, average pace, and calories burnt. So I've entered in my weight and uh, height and stuff so it knows approximately how many calories I burn. This is what I used last time. So here we go, Diesel. Making good decisions today. All right, you guard the truck. Well, got ourselves onto the first side street here from where we parked. No sidewalks. Huh. I hope not every street is like this. But whatever, I guess we'll just walk down the street then. No sidewalks there either. Huh. Okay, well, we'll go down to the end of this street and wind our way around town till we feel like we've gone far enough. Curling club, wouldn't be a Canadian town without a curling club. This looks interesting. Looks like an old school train station. The railway isn't even nearby here though. It's a museum. Well, that'd be fun to explore, but they're closed right now. It says on the window. Huh, I wonder if the train tracks used to go past here? Oh yeah, there's some rail back there, but it doesn't go anywhere. Maybe it was moved here? I don't know if you could move a building like that. Huh. Interesting. Never knew that was there. Some pretty old trees, eh? Makes you wonder when this neighborhood was built. These are probably just little baby trees when these houses were built. It's interesting when you go on walks, you see so many things that you wouldn't see just driving through. And the fresh air is really nice, too. That's a really cool house. Wow. That thing's old. Bet you that was one of the first houses around here. Beautiful old church. Wow. Wonder which church this is. We'll go around the front and we'll see. Knox Presbyterian. Okay, cool. Yeah, still in use. Cool. I'd love to see inside there. They sure don't build churches like they used to, you know? It's beautiful. See, that's more along the lines of a modern building. See, they don't build them like they used to. Still looks nice. Modern architecture is sort of, I don't know, I'd almost say it's a stain on our history. <laughs> so I mean, look, look at this, here's another nice old building. All the intricate details, you probably can't see it from here with GoPro, but you know, these take a lot more pride in the architecture and all the fine little details, you know? That's, that's not a good example, that building there, but you know what I mean, right? You people living in Europe who have buildings that are hundreds and hundreds of years old. You know, you know firsthand, modern architecture does not, does not compare to the way buildings used to be built. I wish we'd go back, take a little bit more pride, you know? I think I was born in the wrong century. Well, they've got a sidewalk on at least one street in town. Kind of nice. 
Most streets in Naples here don't have any sidewalks. I've passed at least like eight churches in this little town on my walk. Hey, here's another old one. Now, what are you trying to do, Nepoi? You're trying to give Steinbach a run for their money? <laughs> Steinbach's like the, the church capital, I think, of Canada. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I do believe that Steinbach has the most churches per capita of any town or city in Canada. But Nepal seems to be trying to take that title from us. A lot of churches in town. Check this truck out. <laughs> yeah, old school. So that was a good walk. I felt good about it. Now I'm trying to get back onto the highway and there was literally nobody on this road a minute ago. And as soon as I put it in gear and pulled up to the road here, non-stop. I guess church just got out. I am filming this on a Sunday. Well, it's 2.30. I mean, that'd be a late service. There is a lot of Filipinos in this town. You know, walking around this town, I never knew. There's almost mostly Filipinos here. There's even a Filipino church. So now we got uh, 600 kilometers left to go, but at least we got our exercise in for the day. Feel good about it. Blood pressure was looking pretty good after the walk. We'll see what it is this evening again. Uh, I think it was 136 over 74 after my walk. So, you know, I expected it to be a little higher because I was out walking, but you know, I'm not too sure exactly how it all works. I just know I got to keep an eye on it. So we're working with the small amount of daylight we're getting nowadays. It always happens so quickly. Halfway between the solstice, suddenly the, the days just completely change. Same thing happens around the, I'd say, what, May? In spring, the days suddenly just get longer really quickly. But we're just into Saskatchewan now, so we still have quite a ways to go. Uh, my GPS is telling me 376 kilometers. And we've already driven 400, so we're just over halfway, aren't we? Approximately halfway there for today. I was kind of thinking that we'd probably have more daylight hours today, but yeah, it is what it is. I seem to be saying that a lot lately. It is what it is. There's so many things that you just can't change. You just gotta. Yorkton, Saskatchewan. We're gonna pull into the Petro Pass here, just on the east side of town. Grab a coffee real quick. I am thirsty. 340 kilometers left on our day. That's three and a half hours of driving, so six times three, 18, huh? 200 miles, let's say, somewhere around there. we can find a parking spot. Oh, hey, what's this? This is new back here. Truck wash. Look at that, a touchless truck wash? Really? I wonder how expensive it is. You know, there's a one truck wash along the Trans-Canada by Edmonton. And they say, oh, it's an eight minute truck wash. I went to go and get my truck wash there once. I walked right back out because the washes cost like $150 or something like that. Even more expensive than the Blue Beacons. I wonder how expensive the truck wash would be here. This is only one real way to find out. That'd be a good spot for one though. You know, Yorkton's halfway up to Saskatoon. It's hard to find good truck washes in Canada. I wish we had more blue beacons. I really like them. They have a good setup. But I just gotta find some good ones. I'm gonna park right here. So I'm at that 24-7 truck stop again uh, in Saskatchewan. It's actually a really nice little place right over there. Can you see it? Gosh, it's on Highway 16 and I'm gonna get an early night here tonight and start early tomorrow. Get our hours on the right track. 
So I'll be leaving here at about 7 a.m. tomorrow. <sighs> Much better schedule than what we were working with today. And I'm really tired today for some reason. We have about 11 hours till we have to leave here. But uh, I'll probably leave here a little earlier than that just so that I'm not late, you know. Oh, just get this place ready for sleep. there watch some TV I'm into this uh, Netflix series right now about zombies <laughs> it's actually made me had a couple have a couple nightmares about zombies in the last couple of weeks but which is weird because I usually don't have nightmares I usually don't I don't dream very often but I don't know it's a good series what can I say they make it into my dreams and you know it's good so i'll talk to you guys tomorrow morning first thing don't forget to subscribe hit that like button and i'll see you tomorrow